your speed, your ability to rebound. He thought that they get a good defensive player because he liked to shoot too. Basketball's changed a lot since that structured offense you were in. What do you think about the way they play now? Easy, Kurt. Why are you ask me that question? <laughs> Well, I mean, the way they play now, I, I kind of enjoy some of it because, you know, they're getting up and down the floor and not playing with the shot clock. I'm not just talking about Alabama. I think that's becoming the style. So, I mean, I'm enjoying the way they're playing. Uh, the teams that are playing on the defensive end, though, I think are the teams that have a chance to win. So, you got to kind of feel put both of those together. Uh, I'm, I live in Waco, Texas, and Baylor right now is the number one team in the country. It's fun watching them play. They're, they are a tough basketball team on both ends of the court, and they still get up and down the floor, but they are tough. Hey, Wendell. Uh, ben Sands with the Crimson White here. Um, earlier this week, some of the players on the team talked about how uh, they don't know if they would be here if you hadn't done what you did. Um, how does it feel to, to hear some of the current players talk about the impact you've had? It's a, it's, it's a unbelievable feeling to think that an 18-year-old person that would be like them right now did not have a clue about what he was really doing when he came here from a historical standpoint, but kind of felt like it would be an opportunity to play and do some things. To now, 50 years later, to look back on it as an old man and understand the historical standpoint and also to understand that, you know, my story is not the necessarily typical story of integrating the athletic department and being the first black athlete uh, because I had fun. It was enjoyable. It was fun. It was, it, it, it was a, it's a good story, and a lot of times people don't want to print a good story. Can you kind of go into a little bit of that, that story and understand your, you want to speak to the team or already have, you know, what kind of message are you giving to the kids nowadays? To kind of Well, I spoke to the team after they got through a shoot around, and you know, they could they wouldn't have a concept of what <laughs> life was when I came here, and, and so I didn't dwell on that life. But what I did dwell on was that the same thing I just said earlier: that credit to Alabama because you're here. This is a good place, and this is a good story. And I told them that. I said I don't have some of those bad things. I it was not perfect when I was here, but it's not it was not a bad thing. But the other thing I told them, and, 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 and this, this is the coaching coming out in me, I guess, is that live in the moment. And, and every day, and this is what I tried to do when I was a player, and I told them this. Every day I tried to be the best player on the court. It didn't matter with practice or games. Every day. And, and, and someone was looking at me, and I know they were thinking, every day in practice too? I know, I know what the idea is about that, because everybody with the, the, in the world we live in today and not only today, but athletes is, you know, a game, though. I'm a gamer. I, I can go and turn it on and turn it on. Well, if, if you do it every day, you don't have to worry about turning it any other way. And so I spoke to them about that and, and what that meant. And, I, and also about, you know, only you're going to know if you are the person, you've given all you've got to be successful. Scoring 20 points don't mean that you played to the, your capability. Scoring 20 points means that you scored, you know, four or five baskets or five or six or whatever. Only you're going to know that whether or not you play to your uh, capabilities. And if you do that all the time, you don't ever worry about, have to worry about the outcomes of games. What does it mean to you? you know, for a lot of programs highlight players, you know, put retired jerseys, all this kind of stuff. But you're the first to do it all. Now, what does that mean to you to have your jersey in the after and kind of know that? Whether or not the number is actually kind of still going to be in circulation, that, that that's your place here. Now I put stipulation on that circulation. I, I want it on the bench. Somebody got to <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the fact that the jersey's being retired, and a lot of schools have done that, but uh, Alabama traditionally, in, in the forever, has never uh, retired a the jersey. There's been a lot of great athletes to come through here, and a lot of things that have happened. And for my jersey to be the first, Jersey to be put up anywhere, and from a time it is, it's a, it's a, a great feeling and an unbelievable feel about. I, I think part of it is that I was a good player, which I think I was. You know, you got to think that if you're gonna play. But the other part of it about it, I think, is that 
I don't think I was a bad person either. Uh, I think I kind of carried myself and represented the University of Alabama when I was here as a player and later on as a coach and then came back and during my whole career, there's nothing out there that they're going to say they're going to pop up tomorrow and they're going to say, well, we shouldn't put that up. <laughs> so I think that's, uh, that's a, a great feeling to feel like that it, it would be worthy of being up here. I just wanted to get your reaction and had a chance to talk to you about it, the SEC story series, you know, with Sam Newton and everything, and just what you thought of that, how accurate a portrayal that was of that era, how you knew that era. I think the, uh, the story was really good, uh, and I think it was pretty accurate. Some of the things, you know, I didn't kiss the ground when I crossed the Mississippi line and all that kind of stuff, but, uh, but some of the stories, uh, and some of the, most of it was actually true in, in the way it was, and, you know, during that period of time, things happened, you know, we're talking about 50 years ago, and we're talking about, talking about it now, and you're talking about traveling on the road here in the South and going to different places to play in. Some of the people in the stands, and, and matter of fact, I was talking to uh, some of the guys who were doing the game today, and they were like, you know, tell me about it. And I said, you know, the problem is that sometimes I, I went into the same arena that everybody else went into. I don't remember a lot of the negative things people said because I was out there playing. That's one. But the second thing is that if you're playing and concentrating on trying to do that, you ain't got time to worry about what the fans are saying anyway. Unfortunately, one school I do remember because they wouldn't let me play. So, <laughs> uh, my last foul when they weaved through about six people to get back there to back to call a foul on me, and I had to sit over there and hear that stuff. Have they told you what's going to happen at a halftime, or is it just going to be a complete surprise? No, I, I think I got an idea of what's going to happen at halftime, I think. Because I've already had a couple surprises already. <laughs> and for surprises last night, I, I knew the men's basketball team was going to put that WH on their jersey. But last night, when they read the proclamation and from the board that you know all the teams are going to have that WH on their uniforms and stuff for the rest of this year. Now that that's unbelievable. That's that's that was one of those surprises. So I don't know. I don't know. You might know something I don't know. But uh, from a surprise standpoint, that was and actually on the way walking over from the baseball game over here, uh, Brian. Who's been hailing me? I'm telling you, he's been weighing me out, but no. <laughs> he's been hailing me. He showed me a picture of the golf team. They had uh, a budget with WH on their golf bag. Which I, you know, Jay is such a good guy. I mean, that was, that was really a neat situation. I, I need to get some golf balls, by the way. <laughs> what was your reaction when you found out about this, this the jersey honoring, since they had you know, they'd never done it before? It's the first one to be retired. What was your reaction when you heard about it? Well, when Greg uh, called me and, and to tell me, we were talking and he said, hey, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do something we've never done here before. And so I'm just running through my mouth, like, what y'all going to do that you've never done here before? And when he told me about the time the jersey and that kind of stuff, I paused. As a matter of fact, we talked about it yesterday. I just paused on the phone. I said, do you, re do you realize I paused? He said, yeah, I reckon you paused. Because I had to take that in, you know, because I know the history of Alabama. And I know the history of the athletes and all the things that have happened here. And I know the people that argued about, won't you retire somebody in Jersey here before? And, uh, and for mine to be the first one, it was, it's a, it was an unbelievable feeling when I found out about it. Time for a couple more. Anybody got questions? Just, you mentioned having a lot of fun in your time playing. And, uh, and this week, I would imagine it's brought back some memories for you. Is, is, there, is there one or two memories that really have you've been thinking a lot about this week? I think the biggest thing about this week is, is that, and I mean, I just left a little reception up there for his players and that kind of thing. And to see, we, we got a guy that came back here. He hadn't been back here in 50 years. He had not been back to Tuscaloosa since he left in 50 years. And to be able to have that, to see him, and, we embraced each other and be a part. And, and a lot of those guys that are upstairs that had a lot to do with getting me the ball. And I, I told them that they did a good job. That kind of stuff. But, but really, uh, with teammates and talking about old stories and when we did this, and most of the stories of, you remember when we went down to the bottom gym and we couldn't hardly crawl out and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, I remember crawling out. There's no bottom gym now. Y'all want to know what we're talking about? Uh, Kirkwood, I know that. A couple people here would know. But, uh, but that, that kind of, that really sticks out because everybody watched the game or played the game and everybody had saw it in a different light. Hey, do you remember that when we were doing this and then, you know, and all those memories coming back 
uh, dealing with guys who I played with and ex-players. I even got some guys who played with me in high school back there, and so they're telling stories also. <laughs> so that's what's been really great about being back part of it here this weekend. Cecil and Amy. Well, no, your mom was obviously so great as well as some of you. Um, do you think she went through some things, particularly back in Birmingham, when you were being recruited, when they were looking at you, that you didn't even know about until years later? And, uh, I, don't, I don't think that the, the process was not like it is today where your family was so involved and parents was all involved. My mom didn't care if I played basketball, first thing, uh, to be just frank about it. Uh, uh, she didn't really want me to play. I didn't care if I played. She wanted me to be a good student and go to college and do that kind of stuff. But playing basketball was not that important. So she was not that involved. It, and, and the recruiting process was through the high school coaches and that kind of thing. So it changed it up. So I don't, I don't think she went through a whole lot from the recruiting standpoint. I think the biggest thing that she went through is when it was time to come to school down here in Alabama, she started thinking and getting a little nervous about that. There's no question she got more than a little nervous about that. How, how did she handle that? Uh, you know, she was trying not to uh, to show that, that emotion. And uh, But I remember that uh, my mom, you know, she, she thought she could see me. I don't know about that part of it either. But, in the process, in the weeks, a couple of weeks leading up to that, she would just be doing stuff and she would just start kind of humming and singing and all that. Well, that's what she did when she was nervous and worried. And so I heard her trying to sing a little bit more than I, I, I had done previously at any point. And so I knew she was getting really concerned about what was, what was about to happen. Just integrating with accepting everybody and bringing everybody together in the last six years. Just where, where do you feel they've come along? Well, I think athletics have come a long way. We're talking about athletics. <laughs> but really, I think athletics, uh, you know, at the end of the day, in, in athletics, especially college athletics, you need to win. And coaches understand that. And all of those things that might have been taboo at one time from what position you played and who you played, you know. And, and even as integration started early, you know, point guard had to be a certain color because that was, you know, the quarterback and all that stuff. Well, you don't see that today in college athletics. It's fun that you can win because there's too much money involved for you to keep your job. And if you don't win, it's, you're not going to be making all that money. So that, got, that kind of stuff is, I think, uh, and I think that's what the athletics would do for you. They would eliminate all that stuff because you gotta, you gotta win. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta win, or somebody else gonna have that job. And if you didn't win because you worried about the color of that player that's out there playing, you're done. You're done. So I think it's at college athletics have come a long way. And, and it's helped everybody come a long way because people cheer for teams and you look out there, oh, who are you cheering for now? Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, the sorry, golf game. <laughs> I can still beat you here. <laughs> Any time right, right. you want to play, we go play in between halftime if you want to. Let me ask one yeah. more. Just, just follow it up on that process. What did, what did Cap tell you when you came to sit down with him? What did, what did he say? Well, it, it was not a, it was not a, Cap Brown was Cap Brown. He was my high school coach up until my junior year. Uh, the guy who coached me my senior year was Herman Williams. And uh, matter of fact, he spoke on the video yesterday. And uh, but between Cap and Herman, you know, here's the, here's the key. And, and, and CM said this. CM said a lot of things. I think he was a little smarter than I thought he was. <laughs> but uh, he said this. He said he said Hood going to Parker to recruit to Parker was different than going to some of the other schools in, in Birmingham, predominantly black schools in Birmingham. And I asked him why. He said because the people at Parker was wanted you to go to college. He said a couple of schools that he went to in Birmingham, they wanted you to go, they were predominantly black, they wanted their kids to go to a black college, a predominantly black college. He said Parker was never that way, he never got that feel. So I never got any kind of feel from my high school coaches about, you know, coming to Alabama just because of where it was and what it was. They was like, hey, you want a chance to play, you can go. Everybody wanted to play at uh, the highest level that they could play. And I looked out there and I thought, I could Questions? 